So in this case, we are going to consider again as a basic continuation from uh, the previous class that we had. Uh, remember, we managed to work on the properties that we are going to need as we are referring to a right angle triangle depending with the given angle. As we do understand that uh, the given sides of a right angle triangle were named according to the given angle. So in this case, we want to understand the trigonometric ratios from a right angled triangle as we are working with our right angled triangle. It is important that also we go back to the basics of uh, this understanding of the ratios. The trigonometric ratios are used to solve a triangle. As part of the trigonometry, guys, if we are given a right angled triangle like this, we can solve for all the given sides. We can solve for all the given angles. In actual sense, guys, as we can see, we've got one, two, three sides, three angles. We can find all the three sides, all the three angles. That is to solve for a triangle. So the trigonometrical ratios are part and parcel of that solving of the triangle, meaning to say they help us in solving. They help in solving uh, the triangle. So whenever we are given a triangle, we are given angles, we can solve that part of the triangle using the trigonometric ratios uh, as we had the Pythagoras theorem before. Remember, Pythagoras theorem was limited only to the sides. But once there is an angle which is inside of that triangle that you're given, let's say you're given angle theta inside of this triangle. Remember, I said these sides will be affected. Once you've got an angle theta like that, the sides are now affected, starting from the hypotenuse that we had. So this is our hypotenuse according to our theta. This will be the opposite side and the last part adjacent. We talked about this in the previous class. So according also to that angle theta this, that we are given there, it is the one that will help us to formulate these trigonometrical ratios. So there are actually three uh, trigonometrical ratios. There are three. Three ratios that we have got in our syllabus that we are going to consider, which is the first one from the ratio of a sine, that is the sine. It is actually the sine in full like this, but we're just going to write in short sine, but it is what? Sine. So we've got sine, we have got uh, the cosine, and we also have the tangent. All right. So these can be written in short the sine, the cos, and the tan. So the sine of an angle, the sine of theta is equivalent to the opposite over the hypotenuse. So this is opposite over hypotenuse. It's a ratio. As we are saying, guys, trigonometric ratios, this one over this, that's a ratio. Then number two, the cos of the angle that you are given as theta is equivalent to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Then we also have the one for a tan, which is the tan of theta is equivalent to the opposite over the adjacent. So here it is sine of angle. Theta is the angle. Cos is the angle. I mean, cos of theta, the angle there. Tan of the angle. That is the three trigonometric ratios, which we can actually uh, take guys from these uh, or from these mnemonics, we can just uh, simply uh, memorize this one, uh, the Soka Toa, like this. That is Soka Toa. So we can use these mnemonics to uh, memorize or to get back to the trigonometric ratios. The sine of theta from this S sine of an angle that you are given opposite over hypotenuse. 
the course of a certain angle adjacent over the hypotenuse. The turn of a certain angle is what? Opposite over adjacent. So in that way, uh, even in exam, you can memorize this, try to apply this uh, coding to the given uh, angles or according to the given triangle. Like I said, you name the triangle according to the angle, then you can use these uh, three trigonometric ratios. So we are going to see uh, in another class, working with their corresponding reciprocals, the reciprocal of each, the reciprocal of each. But for now, I just want you to know the basics. So just like in this triangle, we are given in uh, triangle DEF. Given size DE is 5 centimeters, EF 12 centimeters, angle E is 90 degrees. And we are given that angle D is equal to angle B, right, beta. Angle D is equal to angle beta. They're, they're just trying to indicate like what is inside. So D is beta. And this angle F is what is angle theta. So there is uh, this angle theta. So this is what we are given. Determine on A the length of the hypotenuse, which is DF. The length of the hypotenuse. So the question is, is it to do with these trigonometric ratios? No. It has nothing to do with these trigonometric ratios. But we understand back to our Pythagoras theorem that whenever we are working with the sides, given two sides, the third one can be calculated from the Pythagoras theorem. So it means in this case, there was no need of any trigonometric ratio use because we are given two sides of a triangle. So the third one can be calculated. And that is a fortunate part. The third side that we are talking about is the hypotenuse, the one that faces what? The 90 degrees. So we are talking about the hypotenuse. So remember from our formula, guys, all right, that the hypotenuse is squared, which is in this case, that is our DF. So hypotenuse squared, which is df squared, is equal to what? the sum of the shorter side squared, the square of these two shorter sides, which is de, all right, which is the de squared and the ef. Those are the shorter sides. So we are taking this from what? Pythagoras theorem. From our Pythagoras theorem. So meaning to say, we can calculate DF. Just substituting what we are given. So it means DF squared is equal to DE from D to E, that's five centimeters. So just write the number there. Do not write the centimeters. So that's five squared. From E to F, that is 12 centimeters. So plus 12 squared. According to the formula squared, you must square those sides. So that's it. DF can be calculated. So let's simplify this. We are back to our grade 9 mathematics here. So that's 5 squared, which is 25 plus uh, 144 from 12 squared. So adding uh, these two together, you're going to obtain 169. Then to find DF, you must introduce the square root since we have a square. Since we have a square. We are going to introduce the square root both sides. So introduce the square root both sides. Thus df is equal to 13. So that was going to give us 13. According to the units that we are given, uh, these are centimeters. So it means uh, that is what? 13 centimeters. Okay. So this question has nothing to do with the trigonometry part. Like uh, in terms of... Uh, the trigonometric ratios, not, not to say the trigonometric, but the trigonometric what? Ratios. Pythagoras theorem was direct. 
Okay, now that we have got uh, this, uh, we said this is 13 centimeters, we've got this. The question now further on, on B, write the value of sine theta, cos theta, tan theta. We have everything. All the sides are there. So we need these ratios, but take note, these ratios that we are given are from theta, sine theta, cos theta, tan theta. We are working with the theta at this moment. This is the case. So we are going to name our triangle, guys, according to theta. Ignore about the, this beta that you're given. Just, just act as if it's not even there, this one. Ignore about this beta, this one. Your reference angle there is theta. So that's our reference. So according to theta, we do understand this is the opposite. The one that faces theta is our opposite. So redraw your triangle. There's no need for you to erase. Redraw a triangle which is focused on what? On theta on its own. This is the part of D. This is your E. This is your F. You've got your size 12, 5. And 13, you are focused on theta. Ignore this one, the beta that you're given, because it's about theta this time. So ignore that one. So you can say, according to theta, this is our opposite. This is our adjacent. Remember, the hypotenuse does not change. This is what I'm trying to say. So in each and every case, make sure that you redraw your diagram so that you properly see what you have. So we have got uh, our adjacent here. So we have named this triangle according to the angle theta. Remember, guys, the hypotenuse does not change. So all the sides are there. It is easier for us to find these ratios as we said, guys, from the previous class that we saw Katoa. Remember the previous, I mean, uh, formulas that we had. So we need the one for a sine of the angle. So we know that the sine of the angle. The angle is what? Theta. So the sine of theta is equal to what? Opposite over hypotenuse. So it is supposed to be the opposite over the hypotenuse. According to this, opposite over hypotenuse. But what is that opposite? Our opposite is what? Five centimeters over the hypotenuse. What is that part representing the hypotenuse? That is 13 centimeters. So that is it. So it's 5 over 13. Guys, as you can see, 5 centimeters over 13 centimeters. This one and this one was going to cancel. You just remain with the numbers only 5 over 13. So this is a ratio, this one. Remember, a ratio can be written as this. 5 as to 13. 5 over 13. It's a ratio. So you take the ratio according to these uh, mnemonics that we had. So let's go to the cos. So according to cos adjacent over what? Hypotenuse. So the cosine of theta was supposed to be taken as the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Adjacent over hypotenuse. What is our adjacent according to that theta? Our adjacent, remember, it is 12. And hypotenuse is what? 13. According to theta. Then we move on to tan, the tan of theta. So in this case, the tan of angle theta opposite over what? Adjacent. So what is representing the opposite? It's 5. Over the adjacent, which is what? Which is 12. So this will be 5 over 12. So that is the idea. There. That is how we can name our trigonometric ratios. So what is important which angle, which angle are you referring to is your reference. Because if you check on part C, they want the same ratios, but now different angles. The sine of beta, the cos of beta, the tan of what? Of beta. So it means this diagram that we are having, guys, cannot work because it was used for theta as a reference. So it is going to change this part. It is going to change. Only the hypotenuse is not affected. 
always facing what? 90 degrees. The longest side does not change. But this time we are talking about beta as our reference. So let's get rid of theta. It's just like theta is not there. You act as if theta is not there. You focus on what? On this angle beta. This is the one that you are given here. So it's our reference angle this time, this one. According to it, according to that beta, the opposite always facing that, always opposite to the angle. So that will be our opposite this time. And definitely this will be our adjacent beta and 90 degrees are adjacent to each other. Or the remaining side definitely will be your adjacent. As we said, hypotenuse is already there. does not change. So you see, these sides have been affected according to the angle. So always be very careful, especially in exam. They will ask a lot of things from the same triangle. They will ask something which is focused on this angle. Another question is focused on this angle. You treat each separately. If it is possible, redraw your diagrams in exam. Do not rush. Redraw. Focus the... On this one, another one focusing on, on this angle so that you do not have uh, problems when answering your questions. So anyways, guys, let us quickly have our answers. So the sine of angle beta is going to be still the ratio does not change opposite over hypotenuse. But what just changed is the way we enamed those sides because this is now our opposite. The ratio does not change. Opposed over hypotenuse. What? But what is that opposite now? The opposite is what? Is now 12. And what is our hypotenuse? Hypotenuse is not affected. That is the longest side, 18. So the same thing on the cos of, uh, on the cos of beta. So the cos of beta will be adjacent over the hypotenuse. What is our adjacent according to beta? Our adjacent is 5. And our hypotenuse is what? Is 13. So that's 5 over 13. And the last one is the tan. So the tan in this case, that will be the tan of beta being opposite of adjacent. So according to this diagram, our opposite is what? Is 12. And our adjacent, according to beta, our adjacent is what? Is 5. So that is how we can easily name or figure out or just to fill in whatever trigonometric ratio that you are given uh, which can actually be used when even solving for any triangle we are going to look into that in the later classes but for now i want you to know these basics use these basics now to answer as many questions as you can so that is it guys uh till we meet again